The thumbnail and title are likely to make some people upset, perhaps rightfully so since the Storm franchise is quite enjoyable and almost always received well by fans. I myself have a soft spot for the Storm games, but much how I like Charizard from Pokemon and still consider him overrated, I feel the same way about the Storm franchise. The Storm franchise was off to a good start. When it was introduced on the PS3, it contained the majority of the Part 1 storyline and was by far the most beautiful Naruto game we'd ever seen. The combos were flashy, watching the characters jump around and throw shurikens with grace made you feel like you wanted to play the game, and there was a plethora of options and things to enjoy, like in-game item usage, an actually fun to explore Konoha, jutsu clashes, wall combat, and jaw-dropping ultimate jutsus on a similar cinematic level as Ultimate Ninja 5. The franchise would go on to take a step back on most of these mechanics in the sequel, Storm 2. We didn't have jutsu clashing, wall combat, or cinematic interactive ultimate jutsus. They were heavily watered down. The map was expanded, but moving through the world was a chore and wasn't nearly as detailed. I actually found myself much preferring the Konoha exploration in the first game. Most people, myself included, didn't actually really mind this though, since the roster for Storm 2 was Shippuden characters, uh, which was a first for Naruto fans, at least most of them, since the only game I can recall that had a Shippuden roster before Storm 2 was Ultimate Ninja 4 on the PS2, at least that's what I can recall. Well, Europe got Ultimate Ninja 5. Fuck you, Europe. <laughs> the franchise started to test my patience with Storm 3. Generations was an in-between game with the promise that CyberConnect2 was listening to fan criticisms. They even opened up a website to accept fan suggestions. But once Storm 3 came out, very little changed. The map was still limiting and boring to explore, no jutsu clashing or wall combat. The only gameplay element that was changed was the substitution system, and it arguably wasn't even fixed all that well. This brings me to why I find the Storm games overweighted, and why Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Strikers will be a more fun game to play. The Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm series is without a doubt the most beautiful Naruto game we are ever going to get, ever. CyberConnect2 has pretty much perfected the Naruto look in the Storm games, and no game in the future is likely to come close to their visual style. On a gameplay level, the Storm series runs a little bit dry. The combos are fun to watch at first, but after about 10 minutes, you get tired of seeing the same stuff over and over again, and the combos are all done automatically by mashing one button. I'm pretty sure no one is arguing that the Storm series is a viable competitive fighting game or anything, but it definitely lacks an engaging combat system. By the latest game, we have over 100 characters in Storm 4, but eventually, you realize that it doesn't really matter how many characters there are, because your playstyle and the optimal strategy is going to stay the same. You're going to jump around and try to burn all of your opponent's substitution bars, and then when they run out, you go all in, mash the attack button, and then do chakra dash cancels to extend your combo as long as possible before they get their substitution bars back. That's it. There isn't any notable nuance to each character's movesets that make them play differently from other characters and sets them apart except for maybe the ranged only characters like Deidara, Tamari, and Tenten. Look, I know this was intentional, CyberConnect2 put visuals above everything else, but the point is, it makes the game much less fun to play. Now onto Strikers. I'm seeing a lot of hate for Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Strikers in the comments of videos that feature their trailers. People saying stuff like how it looks like a PS2 game, visuals looking unimpressive, and something about Naruto's hair looking like a bundle of fries. Low key, that one's actually kind of funny. Let's get to the obvious thing first. This isn't a very visually stunning game, obviously, and it is a bit jarring to see a game that looks like this coming off the heels of something as pretty as this. If I had to bag on something else, it's that we haven't seen a lot of characters yet besides Shikamaru and Choji in some scans that we haven't actually seen in official trailers, and then the eight characters that we've seen featured in the actual trailers. But to be honest, that's where my gripes end. I have a lot of good vibes from this game, and I don't think people are willing to look past the art style and graphics to see the dynamics this game can bring. Forgive me for being lenient on the graphics, but I grew up in a world where Mario had a Lego ass nose. Also, if you think about it, it's really only the character introductions before battle that look bland. In the actual combat portions, it's hard to focus or even tell that the graphics are lacking, and even if I could, it still wouldn't matter because that's not the focus of the game. The game has the potential to be the most in-depth Naruto multiplayer fighter so far. For one, 
Characters are separated into categories, attack, defense, throw, and support. Sakura can actually run around and heal her whole squad at once and herself. Let's not understate the importance of that and of the support class. Its existence, and not even just support, but the existence of the categories themselves. Its existence and versatility will make the combat much more in-depth. Depending on the makeup of a team, it might be more prudent to focus on fighting one certain opponent of a certain type to shut them down because what they do for their team, like they might be the backbone of their team composition. It might be more worth it to focus Sakura first if she's healing her whole squad and then they have like Kisame and Chikamaru who are these defense characters who are hard to kill especially when they're getting backup healing. So it might be more of a, it might be more strategically advantageous to focus soccer in that situation if they're going for a more defensive composition and stall, right? That kind of strategy we don't see in other Naruto games. So this is a really fresh take on Naruto combat. Each character has unique abilities in this game that actually matter, unlike Storm. The modes also play a big part in why this game will be much more interesting than the Storm series. In particular, the capture the point mode might be the most awesome. The person who is capturing the point has to stay still and channel chakra while on top of the point, which means that your allies have to defend you while you're on top of it and helpless to defend yourself. This creates a lot of interesting dynamics in terms of people fighting each other in order to protect or attack the person on the rising platform. A similar dynamic will be seen with capture the flag, although it's tricky to judge this one because we aren't too sure if the flag carrier's movement options are limited or if they can't use abilities. So I'm withholding judgment on that. Also, I'm not too sure how I feel about the summoning monsters and how they'll play. Like, I don't know if it's just a mode or a transformation. Like, I don't know what's up with that. It looks cool, but like with Capture the Flag, I'm going to withhold judgment on this. But I really do have high hopes for that capture mode where you have to capture that one point and stay on top of that pillar as it rises up. Let me get one thing straight. I'm not saying that because the Storm series had a lackluster and non-engaging or in-depth combat system that Strikers is going to have some complex combo system or anything like that. But because of the team dynamics and the character types, this will be the closest thing we get to complex team-oriented combat in a Naruto game. Just like we see in the early days of the Naruto anime, this is stuff that we should be getting excited for. People are willing to write off this game simply because of the graphics, and I think that's a really bad way of looking at it. If you're willing to give this game a chance, I bet you and others will come to see it as the really fun multiplayer game that it can be. Also, this is the first game, hopefully the first in many, in the Striker series that we're getting. Compared to the Storm franchise, which has had multiple years and multiple sequels to establish itself, to change its features, to fix its own issues, and to establish its roster. Give this game the same time to develop under the same circumstances, and I'm sure it'll be considered a better game to play, even if it doesn't quite look as visually appealing as Storm. Some of the most beloved, industry-pushing games were ones that today would be a visual joke. Let's extend that same courtesy and withhold judgment based on graphics. <coughs> so I'm actually really excited for this game, and I hope that with this video, you might have a little bit more of an open mind regarding being excited for this game or seeing what else is they have in store. Remember, the game is called Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Strikers. I'm sure we're going to see some more characters that expand both of those universes and timelines. But in the meantime, I hope that I've been able to convince you that at least you shouldn't be too strict on the game just based on graphical style. Tune in next week where I talk about the release trailer at EVO for Icons Battle Arena and why it is a shameless ripoff of Smash.